Judy Henderson, Executive Woo Director. Woo and uh, the uh, Stafford Rotary Club, which there are several members here in the back, and the North Stafford Club, a few members in the back as well. <laughs> So, um, and, and the Rotary Clubs are the ones who are trying to help get, get things organized and chatting with you and encourage you to be an artist. And, uh, uh, our beneficiaries this year, if this poster over here will note, um, you can take a look. This kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that the three organizations do in the community. Um, working specifically, uh, Sue and the museum have been instrumental, have been busy. 40, I think, is the number now of schools 14. that have murals. 14. 14. 14. Wrong, okay, wrong, sorry. There's 33 total schools we're trying to get one in every school. There you go. Um, and so, so, so these are the schools, obviously the two Rotary Clubs are very active with uh, Operation Warm, with, um, with uh, backpacks and school supplies. We also do scholarships. We also do uh, essay contests and music contests. Um, we also do so many, and we, dictionaries for third graders. Has anybody done third grade in, the, in this county? Nobody has done third grade in this county. Not right now. Okay, no, you did. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> ever at one point. <laughs> well, th anyway, if you had done third grade in this county at some, at some point or another, you would have gotten a, a dictionary um, from, from, one of our, from the Rotary Club. So at any rate, so those are just some of the things. The, uh, these Stafford County Public Schools are the beneficiaries of this event. So we are thrilled to have you here. We are thrilled for your participation because you guys are the ones that bring the magic. Okay. Um, you know, we can, we can order water, we can order uh, porta pots, and you know, we can order, we can coordinate with music, but you guys are the ones that people are coming to see. So we are thrilled to have you here. Um, I'm going to hand it off to Sue, and then Sue is going to introduce our, uh, we have two very special people here today. Um, our featured artist, I will, I'm just going to jump ahead. Please do. <laughs> our featured artist is Liz Castellano King, and um, she is. She is um, a phenomenal artist. If, you, if you've been out to the exhibit, the, um, the art exhibit out here, then you've seen the grapes, the grape run. The grape cluster is Liz, and uh, her detail is just amazing. Um, Anna Maples is our signature artist this year. She teaches at I mean, King George, right? Uh, and outstanding. And we have um, her artwork for this year, if I can borrow this, is, is on our flyer. Okay, you have a lot of materials in front of you, but one of these is, is, is a flyer to the event, and this, um, her artwork is a juxtaposition of the, of the historic and the current Chatham Manor. So very, very um, Stafford focus. There's a lot of information available to you. There's a, a bag to put it all in later, but um, I wanted to share that, and I'm gonna hand it off to Sue. Mm -hmm. Don't you remember looking Well, hi, everybody, and once again, <laughs> totally thank you. So this is my 10th year with Pia Kalori. I out today. This, is a, this is a map. I did all the ones in uh, Fredericksburg and now all of these ones here in Stafford, so I'm very excited that um, we're continuing that. I had a great chat today with the original founder, Rick Compton, who's delighted at how much we've been doing and very excited to know that we had this art exhibit. So thank you to the library for hosting our art exhibit. I think it's truly wonderful, and I know a number of you have art on the walls, but if you haven't looked at all of it, Take a, take a moment to do that. It's absolutely fabulous that we have libraries that support the arts and that have hosted us here, not just with the exhibit, but also for this tutorial. So here's to them, you know, thank you. So one of the things I think that happens when we're, when we're working, and I don't think all of you are professional artists, but a number of you are, or could be, or should be thinking about it if you're younger, uh, or even if you're not. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's about the what's the point of this of this show, right? It's because it's not something people buy, right? It washes away. It's transitory. But I want you to think about those times when you've been any place in the world and you've seen artists with an easel and you've stood over their shoulder and you've watched what that you've looked at. What are they painting, right? You, you know you've done that anytime you've ever seen that. Well, this is what we want to experience. We want the artists or the, uh, the audience, the people who are seeing it, to see that. But most importantly, what we want is for you to get some benefit from that. So if you would grab your page that looks like this, that's sitting in front of you, I just threw together 10 ideas for how you can self-promote. And you should be self-promoting. 
Okay. You should be self-promoting whether you're selling or not, right? Because you are an artist. And you shouldn't be assuming you're not an artist, because if you've been accepted in to be a part of this team, you are already an artist, right? So it's about that. And I just want to run through them real quick for you. Create something that's captivating, that's eye-catching. Right? I know you have things that you love. I know maybe somebody loves SpongeBob. And there are certainly people in our audience who like SpongeBob or whatever, right? Football, whatever. But give some thought to is the image that I'm doing, and I'm sure Liz will talk a little bit about this, but is that image captivating? Is it something that is going to grab people's attention? That will draw people to you, and that's the point. Engaging setup. You've got to think about how you're setting up your area. We recognize, if you were here last year, we recognize we had a bit of a jumble and we didn't create alleyways for people to walk around. We're fixing that for the future. So what you need to understand, though, is we are all doing it. We're all messy. I mean, what does it take? Ten minutes before we all have chalk all over the place and we're scratching our face and we look like a hot mess. But the truth of the matter is that, so what? That's part of watching an artist create. You know, I mean, if you've ever seen any artist anywhere create, they look like a mess. Nobody looks pristine, clean in their kitchen except for Martha Stewart. And we That's are not Martha she's, Stewart. She's faking she's it. She's faking it. She <laughs> cleans in between. Anyway, I promise. Set up, set up your area in a way that invites people to come over and see you. If you're, you know, spread out over here and they're worried about stepping on chalk, yeah. they'll take another five steps back and they won't come closer. Tell your story. If you are an artist that wants to get people's attention, you can have a bio out there. You can have an artist statement out there. There's nothing stopping you from that. I would love to see people have a little board that they take down next to them and let people come and look at it. If that's interesting to you, go for it. You gotta be alive, considering, consider interacting. When people are coming by, they really wanna say something, but they don't wanna interrupt you, right? So you can easily do that. You can notice that somebody's hanging around looking for a little while longer, and you can look up at him and go, isn't it cool? Like, I really love her eyes, or something like that, you know? Or, gosh, I love pink. Do you like pink? Whatever it is that you're working on, you can interact. Social media sharing is really important, and it does help us, but that's not the point. The point is that it helps you. And what we're really hoping is that you will use the hashtags we've put here, and you will say, come out and see me at this event. Tell everybody you know, come out and see me. And what happens is we will grab those and pick them up because once you hashtag us, then we can put it out there and we can say, hey, come out and see it. You know, The Ablondi girls are all gonna be out here working together, you gotta see this, it's something else or whatever, right? Um, interactive, engage them by allowing them to contribute. This really can be successful if you want. If you've got a big blue sky and you're running short of time and you want people to help you out with it, ask them if they wanna help. You gotta be selective. You don't need every four year old out there. Help you. Okay? But you can tell that there are people that would like to try it or would like to see what it's like. Don't hesitate. Nobody's stopping you from doing that. Interact with them because people who contribute feel like they're part of it. And there's two things to that, right? If they're helping you with something early on, on Saturday, right? Or even just grab somebody to help you drop your chalk line. Hey, excuse me, can you do me a favor? Can you hold this for a second? At least they feel like they've been part of your art. They'll come back and see what it looks like on Sunday. Right? And that's what you want, for them to see the art of creation, to see what happens from beginning to end. Not necessarily just for you. Network, I think most of us already do this, but you gotta network with fellow artists, right? We're doing that now. But you can also do that, especially if you're running short of a certain color, and you know somebody over there is not, is not using theirs, go swap them. If they're doing a, a seaside, you know, they need all these blues and greens, and you're doing fall in the mountains and all you're using is orange and brown, go swap, right? Go interact with each other. The other thing about that is it's helping you stand up and stretch a little. And really, if you haven't done this for a while, you've got to stand up and stretch. <laughs> Um, collect contact info. If you're really serious as an artist, go ahead and have a clipboard out there. Collect people's intro. If you're interested in my art, please give me your email here. And then connect with them later. I definitely know people at all 10 that I've been to in this region who have gotten lots of commissions from their work that's out there. 
even people who did not have a presence in a gallery or anything like that, somebody came by and went, wow, I really like what you did that. Do you think you could paint my truck? Yeah, give me your email address. I'll get in touch with you. And then, you know, charge them $400 to paint their truck because that's what everybody does in this region if you didn't already know that. Right? Printed materials, if you have business cards or any kind of brochures, have them out there. So that it makes it a little easier. People could just grab one if you're interested, right? And start selectively. And I don't know what your opinion is on this. You, you can tell everybody your thoughts in a bit, Liz. But um, I've, I've definitely heard some of our experts in the past talk about, let's say you're doing a portrait. And there's, there's a face, obviously, sort of center, not completely centered, because we want the rule of thirds and all that. But um, they'll put the eye in first. When people see the eye or the lips of something, they are dying to come back and see what the rest turns out to look like, right? And there's some benefit to starting in the middle and working your way out. I think most of us think linear, linearly and start at the top or start at the bottom or side to side. But if you started in the middle with whatever your key focal point was, people would be going, ooh, wonder what that eye is connected to. And then you could leave that there and start working on all the rest of it. And people will just keep coming by. I know, but what's the face going to look like? It's a thought, right? And the point is to be strategic. You can promote yourself. You can promote your work. You can promote the kinds of things that you are interested in by being out there in this. Because there is nothing else in the region that has 6,000 people walking by to see an artist. And it's free. I mean, I know it's work. Don't misunderstand. But other places you have to pay to show off your work, right? In this, in this case, you don't. So that's my thoughts about that. I just wanted to say part of our intention with this whole series of tutoring has always been to give artists more tools and to help you improve your art. But there's also an art business, right? And that's what some of this can do for you. So. Good luck. I look forward to seeing how everybody's doing it. Um, one other thing, if you aren't aware, maybe you aren't, I, I don't know that we would necessarily announce this, but we're doing a, a calendar now every year that we're gonna sell. So expect that we're going to be out there taking pictures to include in our calendar next year, right? So the, the 24 calendar, the calendar for the calendar year 24 will be for sale out there at Via Calori this year from images from the last two years. And then in the future, that will happen again. So the idea is to keep getting people going, ooh, I don't wanna miss that next year, right? So thank you all so very much. I'm gonna turn it over to Liz and let her tell you all of her hot tips and, uh, and tricks. Thank you.
Um, so you're going to be having sticks out there and yardsticks for people to be able to borrow. Um, uh, we we well, we can, and if you if you can also bring your own uh, yardsticks, your your um, your, uh, your your lines, your chalk lines, and we also have you. You can you get grab those pieces of wood like this, and you can tick mark them for every foot that you want to do, or every six inches. Those are two ninety nine at Lowe's. Yeah, <laughs> and you can cut them to what we have. We have six foot, four foot, and ten foot. I don't think these come in ten foot. That's correct. Eight, eight foot. Eight foot. Yeah. So you could do your six and four, or cut it in five, mm -hmm. and have two. Something to help you to move along, or if you don't have that. We have, you could not, I'm not sure if you're going to have any there, but the chalk lines, but if you use a chalk line or know how to use it or someone can help you, you need two people because if someone's going to hold it, pull it out and snap it. Mm -hmm. And you could snap your lines pretty quickly instead of sitting there going with the grid and one, two, three, move on. And that's how I did mine. I had my husband come in in the morning and say, come on, let's grid this out. And so chalk lines are good too. So you want to get that gridded out. Um, now, up front, we like today, we, the sample that we're doing, okay, so you're going to have your sample, and it's good to have uh, a printout of what you're going to do, grid it up already. Um, now, you can, I, this is what I'm maybe going to do. And you can go to Walmart, and you could get a, uh, a two-foot poster printed out for like $18, $19 if you wanted to have that. And you can put it on like a clipboard. Well, see, I'm working so large, but you can get a smaller print out if you want. Uh, and then I have a really tiny little easel that um, I'll just, I'm going to stand it up because I don't want to go keep going like this over the ground. I want this to be in my face and angled up so I can look at it at a quick glance, okay? Yeah. And um, so that's a suggestion to help you. Um, and you're down there, again, I'm doing a 10 foot square, so I had my husband put together a little wheelie thing so I could roll around. Getting up and moving off your knees and moving over, it's gonna be back breaking. Oh, yeah. Maybe not for you, young girls. But. <laughs> she over, maybe not for you, yeah. but for you and you and me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, the, it, I mean, anything you can think of. There are some knee pads here. Oh, Cardboard yeah. boxes are great. Um, I, actually, knee pads, I meant they were like garden kneelers. kneelers. Yeah, but yeah. knee pads from uh, Home Depot are a great idea to have. Strap them on your knees and you can go around and bring a chair. You're going to be tired. Just sit down and, and rest. So on my grid, I used each square to be one foot. Uh, so then you're going to do is you're going to look at your art. The another thing that I did, but I need to show here. When I uh, did this, I also took a, a tracing paper on top and I made a line drawing to simplify it. Instead of looking at all the shapes and the shadows and all, I, and that will help me to get it down quicker. So if you have a line drawing you can trace on top of your photo, that'll help you when you want to get it down there as quick as you can. Okay, so uh, some thoughts are you can get some garden gloves that are like a leather type or a heavy canvas for smudging. Um, old brushes to help spread the chalk and blend colors are great ideas. Um, these are super cheap in Lowe's chip brushes just to wear down, spread the stuff. Um, I'm not sure if something like this is going to work or not. It's kind of abrasive, but if it's too soft like this, it's just going to eat up. It'll get eaten up on the coffee and it will be no good. So you need something that's harder. You know, maybe even have canvas or old denim jackets or jeans. They might be good for swapping and blending colors, too. Um, chalk eraser, like school eraser, school, school eraser. eraser. Oh, that's right. I think you guys gave them out the first year. We did, and we have them. Okay. We've got on the back table, we've got over here. There are a few things that if you if you did not get one from last year, there's some, there's some eraser. 
researchers, uh, some advisors, and neighbors. Yeah, those were very good. Those were really good. Um, another one, I saw this from somebody else, and I thought it was a great idea. If you have a lot of colors, you can separate them into, uh, like, all your blues, your reds, you know, so that you're quick grabbing instead of going, like, where's that blue, where's that blue? So it might help you to organize your colors. We were given a gift out by charge. <laughs> And if you guys, you know, if you have something that you want to add, please just shout out <laughs> because we're sharing. So yeah, brushes, rags, uh, carpet remnants. Um, those are some ideas there. Okay. Yes, knees, cooler. Or the, they are going to have a tent for water and snacks are going to be in there <coughs> as well. Chairs, couches to relax in. Um, don't forget a hat, sunscreen for sure. And depending on the weather forecast, you might want to consider a tarp if you can cover it up at night, maybe some ways, if they're calling for rain, it might help. That'd be a good idea. I'm not sure we've, have you ever, we've never had rain, huh? We, we have rain. We <laughs> <laughs> did say it. No, we never we did have rain <laughs> last year, the, 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 like the last hour. So we did have rain. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. Already happened. We don't so, need it to happen again. Yeah, we don't need it. Exactly. It's, it's already done. <laughs> <laughs> this is just an idea of how we did it, the four wheels, and then we just wrapped carpet remnants, a uh, couple of pieces underneath, and then wrapped it around and screwed it on. It's a quick and simple little thing. But one thing you do want to remember, realize that the wheels have to be the kind that will go around, not just this way, or mm -hmm. you'll kill yourself. <laughs> you'll be so upset. I have a question about the wheels. Okay. So you're rubbing it in there pretty hard. But it's I'm going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be okay. So I've, I've laid my yoga mat on top of it before, and it didn't. It, it it'll pull up a little bit, but not enough to where it it's, it's going to destroy it. Yeah. And then at the end, you can always take it all away yeah. and go around up by your Head hand up. and just you know, clean it up again, too. And make sure you have like a bucket of water, not just drinking water, but so like clean your stuff. Oh, okay. I did that last year and it was helpful. I didn't do it the first year, but I did it last year. You mean year. like your... Like a bucket just like for cleaning. They have the buckets around the stations, but in order to keep working and quickly working, I had just a, just a big jar, container. Like a mason jar. Just, yeah, not just necessarily a mason jar, but like brushes a... brushes that you're, that you're using to spread the chalk? Yeah, oh, okay. and then it also helps just spread the chalk to get your base down. That's a great idea. That's what I did. Now, is, is that something they they don't care about adding water and doing all that uh, I, I don't to, uh, to my knowledge that is not adding water to chalk is fine I will say that that last year there there was a lot of tempera paint used and no 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 paint no. You, you saw that on, on the all the paperwork I'm sure already from our artist committee there's, there's a the lot of paint. um the tempera paint ways is still you out can there. go about it sometimes people have actually crushed their chalk and put it with water, like and made right. like something they could paint on with a brush. It seems like to me like a lot of extra work. It's still just chalk. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the world. Right? Okay. It's still just chalk. Um, the other pe other times people will you know just use the chalk by itself. Um, you can and maybe you should just use one of those thick, um, cheap children's like sidewalk chalk things to do your line drawing rather than wasting your good white, which you just never seem to have enough of, you know, um, in, in, for your drawing. You don't have to use the high quality chalk for that base level drawing. Um, and we have actually taken an old broomstick and used rubber bands to take one of those big chalk things in order to stand, draw, up, stand up to draw out the basic thing is literally just rubber bands on the end of a broomstick so that you're standing up to do it. You can see the grid there. Tape works better. Tape? Yeah, tape works better than a rubber band. <laughs> no, I think so. Yeah. Duct tape. Duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you the, uh, the blue painter's tape? Yeah. Because it, uh, you know, it comes off fairly easy and because with a rubber band, with rubber bands, if you push too hard it goes wonky. Yeah. So if you tape it down and it works just fine. 
you know, 64 colors in a crayon box, put that base color down. Before, because it's, but you'll notice as soon as we go out here and work on the surface, and those of you who've done it before, that first layer just sinks into the surface. That truck's gone. And it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> the second layer, though, sits right on top, nice and pretty. Okay. So your water bottle, filling station is going to be there. Um, again, business cards, another thing. If you have, happen to have one of these printed out, People can skip it if you have a website. Print out one of these. Uh, you have a QR code. Have it on the on the ground. People can check it check it out. See what your work is like. Other places. Um, definitely bring your you know if you have business cards like she said. Uh, and don't forget to sign your artwork. Please sign your art. <laughs> <laughs> Please sign it. Yes. Have fun and really enjoy it. Um, and like I said, you're going to learn how to talk and chalk. And, uh, everyone's going to just have a great time, most definitely. Yeah. When you're out there and you've been sitting on the ground for a couple of hours, uh, it's easy to get up and walk around. Look at it, look around everybody else is doing. Talk to them because people will come by your square and talk to you. They want to see what you're doing. They want to see how you're doing it. Uh, one of the primary purposes of street art is to draw an audience. And uh, because people, art is unique to most people in our, in our area. Well, most people on the planet, I guess. But because they thoroughly enjoy watching you do your art. Because it's magic. And do not hurry. Unless you have like a 20 foot square, do not hurry. You've got plenty of time. You've got two full days to do it in. So many times I've seen people go out there, they get a small square and they do it in two or three hours. They're done. And yeah, don't hurry. Take your time. Talk to people. Let people talk to you. Put your name out there. Print it. Tape it down to the ground. days because because a, a, a big part of this uh, is to showcase the process okay so we don't want you to do it, it complete it all on the first day please okay because then we're just gonna make you do another one <laughs> okay <laughs> I just you just gotta have to do another one because because that's part of it is is bringing art to the public okay and and this is very um, you know not the public in general doesn't get to see artists in their studios. This is your studio, and it's a very big studio, okay? And um, so people want to see how you're doing this. It's really, it's, it's, it's something not everybody can do. You guys are very special because you can do this, okay? And so you're sharing, and so we want to make sure that you're there both days. Um, the public will be there from 10 to 5. You, you're welcome to come a little earlier to set up. Okay, but um, I, I think um, I think the artist committee shared you know, some, some time frames with you, but I just want to reiterate that. So it's um, it's very special what you are doing, and we appreciate it. Um, uh, Liz yeah. mentioned that there's going to be a tent for uh, sponsors and artists. There'll be food. There'll be some sofas so you can if you say I'm tired of being on my knees or I need to stretch. <laughs> There'll be uh, an area to do that with water and, and snacks and stuff specifically for. Uh, for the, our artists and uh, our sponsors. So, uh, does anybody have any questions? Because we want to get outside next. The the chalk that you have is our best guess, and it wasn't Liz. It was just our best guess. So, if we got something wrong, I apologize. Uh, the, the chalk colors that you have in the bag are our best guess at what you would need to do um, the cone flower that, that Liz gave us. Okay, so.